What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gym Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. We've got a very, very interesting show for you today. We've got lots to discuss. Let's get into it. Brian, what took Josh Whedon so long to respond, man? It's not like I've been waiting for him to respond. I thought he was just going to be like, you know, I don't want to deal with this and just move on. And finally, he responds. And perhaps... Giving you, giving you some indication that things really didn't go well on that set. What do you, what do you think? Well, I mean, I guess practically, I, I, practically speaking, I assume the lawyer, the lawyer, is at the heart of the timing of when he was allowed to say something or when, when comfortable saying something. Um, that being said, uh, when, when I, when I read the, read the article, I was like, oh, that's one way to go, I guess. <laughs> um, I can't imagine it's going to win him any additional points um, yeah. since his approach was basically to go scorch earth and trash gas. I mean, literally basically saying, what, yeah, let, let's break down a couple of these because mm -hmm. listen, I, I mean, you can, everyone's entitled to an opinion and he was the director that was called in, but yeah. uh, two of these in particular, I thought galled me. Uh, I was like, I'm not that stupid. <laughs> But mm -hmm. so one is basically saying that Gogadoc can't speak English. Okay. Like, yeah, come yeah, on. Yeah, throwing like, in, yeah, yeah. Their yeah. second language. She didn't understand what I was saying. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, yeah, yeah. You think you know if, if you're, if you feel your career is being threatened, I don't think you'll misunderstand. First or second that. language <laughs> determines that. Okay, yeah, yeah. And, and there's a lot of corroboration on her side that that is actually what he did. Yeah. And the other thing is, we've heard Gagadaw speak and act for five years, basically, in the mainstream. And obviously, she's been around a lot longer than that as, on the mm -hmm. scene as actor. English is fine. Yeah. So yeah. to go with that. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> if your team was like, okay, check, that's going in the script. Yeah. That's a guaranteed loss. A guaranteed yeah, yeah. loss in the, in the yeah. PR court of public opinion. Yeah, so that's number one. Number two is the Ray Fisher thing. I mean, listen, everyone's got their taste in performances, but you and I, I mean, I think one thing I mean we agreed on in Zack Snyder's Justice League is that the expansion and restoration of Ray Fisher's part is one of the top the best, part. best parts of the film. So for him to be like, <laughs> this guy was terrible, and anyone who saw it would know that he should be left on the cutting room floor, it's like. Who, who is this guy? Like, this guy did direct some successful projects. Like, how can he yeah. possibly see the performance in that light? Like, that just yeah, boggled yeah. my mind that he was like, so then I'm like, if you're saying stuff like that, that's code for, I hate this guy. And I'm yeah, just going to yeah. throw him under the bus any way I can because I don't like the raveling, rousing that he's done, you know, on social media. So, I just think it it takes away the credibility of any whatever defense, if there was any, to begin yeah, with, yeah, yeah. Joshua was going to have. So I don't know who approved this article on his side. I don't know what he thought he was trying to do. I hope he, I mean, maybe he got some emotional catharsis out of doing it. Yeah. But I mean, do you think there's anyone out there in the community who's like, who read that and was like, okay, I'm switching sides. I'm team weed oh, now. No. no. And if, and if there are any of those, I, 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 it, it would be hard to defend on their end because if you read all the the news articles and, and get some of the 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 comments cast members have meant have said, you know they all point towards not a good time on the set of that movie and things being said um, by the director that didn't go well with reputable actors and people who seem people who people like you know ben affleck people like goggle though we would like jason Momoa, uh and and all these guys didn't have a good time on this film i think a lot of them are over it i think gal is over it i think jason Momoa is over it he wants to move on um, you also i mean don't forget you also have you know obviously members of the the cast of buffy the vampire slayer have been coming for a week <laughs> so it's like this is not an isolated project yeah. right so what did, I mean, did, did did Sarah Michelle Geller not speak English either? Like what? What? Yeah. Like what? You know? You know what I mean? Like so. I just yeah. I just feel like 
not, these feature pieces don't happen without vetting from the Whedon team. I'm just shocked that like they sat around and were like, this is, this is it. This is the playbook we're going to run to try to help this guy's tarnish reputation. I'm shocked. Yeah. 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 Cause it, it definitely did not. The whole yeah. Thing. I think he went on his own. I don't, I don't think he's being, I, I, it just sounds, I don't think anyone that's giving him advice would tell him to say some of the things he just said, you know? Um, hey, he gave us Avengers. So thank you. Um, next up. Ben Affleck says that the movies will be, the movie theater will be for big franchises. And Brian, I don't know. I mean, I would, I, I understand why this would make people talk about what he said, but he is not lying. He is not exaggerating about what the movie theater experience will be dominated by the likes of Marvel, Star Wars, Disney, you know, and whoever else does big budget stuff. It's for the experience. Um, I don't think it'll totally dominate. I think that you're going to have these specialized theaters or, 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 or screenings of films that um, are not going to be huge budgets. I feel like it's almost like that now, almost, uh, or that we're getting close to it. But what are your thoughts on, on his statement about uh, the, the, the theater being only for big franchises? I think it's something you and I have talked about on this, this program before, and I think he's a thousand percent right. I don't yeah. think he said it. You know, I heard him talk about it in several different forums. He's not saying it in a negative way. Yeah. It's more of a, this is the way the world works. And mm -hmm. he, you know, I think the last duel is what he used as the example of this, where it was critically acclaimed. You had real movie stars, right? He was in it. Damon was in it. Adam Driver was in it. Ridley Scott's directing it, right? And it does nothing. Like literally it just came yeah. and went. To it's the crazy. Office. But it shows up on streaming and he's like, the numbers were big immediately. Like it was, yeah. so there was, which means there was awareness of the project. People lined up to watch it at home, but weren't willing to pay to go to the theater. And I, I have no problem with that. Yeah. I mean, I just think that is, you know, I think the people who are, there's a little bit of stuck in the past mentality i think when it comes to theaters because it stems from an era where you know we all had it we all had this grainy tube with rabbit ears on our television and had five channels to watch at home and therefore we all went to the movies because that was really the only way to experience you know some of these films big or small yeah but nowadays it's like people have a 65 inch 4k tv on their wall they have sound systems. They got sound systems. They got reclining seats in their house. Like the, the, the margin between the home theater experience and the theater has declined a lot for the small scale, mid budget picture. Yeah. But there is the element of spectacle that you can never replace, right? You, you yeah. cannot replicate. On your left in Endgame, on any size TV you got at home, because yeah. the, you need the community, you need the screen. It just there's nothing. So, so if you have that, and people know that's out there, they're gonna line up to go see it the way they did before. I always draw the music analogy. There's so many talented artists out there who are not great shows. So people would love to download everything they record on Spotify and listen to it all day long but only certain artists can pack stadiums because yeah, yeah. the visual performance they deliver warrants Absolutely. you shelling out the money. And it's Absolutely. no different in movies. Yeah. No different. Did you see it, by the way, um, uh, The Last Duel? No, I haven't seen it yet. I, I want to see I mean, it. It's on my list to see, but I haven't seen it. Where, where is it on? Uh, I have to check. I don't, know who, I don't know who released it. Supposedly it's oh, already okay. out on streaming. I'm guessing it's on Netflix, but I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of, of that comment Mr. Affleck made. Um, next up, now, 
I watched it. Peacemaker. Yes, let's I watched talk. all. I, I I watched all three episodes. Your medal is in t- the mail. I w- it was a tough watch, but I wanted to get through it, and I want to see it through just so that I can be fair in my opinion and not say, "Oh, I didn't watch it because I didn't like it anymore." Whatever the case may be, I want to give it that that I guess as me doing what what we do here, I want to give it that sort of um, attention. Because people, there are people who, listen, there are people who love this. And I don't know if you watch your boy JC, but he was going on for minutes and minutes about how much he loves this. And I'm reading in the comments and going on Instagram. And there's people, there was one guy on Instagram that said, if you don't like this, I don't know what to tell you. My friend, I understand that completely. Because if you do like this, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. It is, it is, you know, those moments where agree to disagree. We don't have to have a conversation. You liked it. You loved it. Fantastic. I, 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 I don't like it at all. Agree to disagree. We don't have to discuss it because we're not going to understand each other. Brian, this made no sense to me, man. I'm watching it and I'm listening to it. I'm like, what am I listening to here? What, what's happening? I get John Cena, is, his character is a little bit out there. and But if you remove certain words from this, sh- this, 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 this writing, what do you have? You have a show that's trying to be funny and you can tell and you can... And it's not funny. To me, it's not funny. To me, it's just goofy. I've never hit the skip the intro button as fast as I do now. I watched it. I watched it the first time just to see what the hell this is. And I'm like, this is like, what is this? You know, uh, hey, if you like it, good for you. If you but. Don't compare it to Marvel. If you're going to, if people, oh, this is better than Marvel, you, you like, listen, don't compare it. It's, it's two different things we're doing here. James Gunn is doing what he wants to do. His dark humor, he's doing what he wants to do. And there are people who like it, and that's fine. But don't tell me I'm crazy. I'm not going to say that you're crazy, but, yo, I don't, I don't get this. I don't get this. I don't like it. It just doesn't work for me at all. It's not funny. And it's all over the place. And it's just, to me, and honestly, a waste of time. Your thoughts? Uh, I, will, I will await you getting deeper in the season. And if you text me that I need to catch up, I'll catch up. Because this okay. show is unwatchable. <laughs> unwatchable. So <laughs> I had hopes for this show. I remember when they first announced it oh, and yeah. before we saw Suicide Squad, I was pretty excited. Yeah. After Suicide Squad, I was like, mm, we'll now see. Now I know what we're getting, yeah. But then, you know what I think happened here that I just, I've just kind of come to realize and it, it's like, I can, it's like when I, it's like going to like the Guggenheim. Like, can walk around the spirals of the Guggenheim and I can look at the art that's on the wall and I can say, I understand that that's art that I'm looking at. I don't have to like it. Yeah. Like, I understand yeah. that someone got really rich making that, but it's just not for me. Yeah. And I, that, to me, what we're finding out about James Gunn is two things, I think. One is that when he is controlled in like a two hour edited movie format, his zaniness and soundtracks and the way he shoots, it's like, it's like refreshing. It moves well, it can add some real life um, that is been, that, or add some real creativity. Mm-hmm. But it's like one of those things that it, it's, it's like one of those things where it's like, it's like, it's like kind of like cotton candy. It's like that first couple of bites. It's like it's good, nice and sweet, whatever. <laughs> Man, you stare. While. But if you hand me the whole thing 
with no editing and no reduction. But it, it's like by the time you get to the end of it, you're just just tum- your stomach is hurting, your mouth is sticky, you're like I'm done. Like, and yeah, I think yeah, with yeah. this, he has no editing. It's like yeah. he's he can have any rating he wants. The show can be as long as he wants. And so I think it's like when we see him in a, directing a movie, we're getting the top shelf jokes, the best gags, the best versions of all the ideas he had. And this show is everything that got left on the writer's room is in the show. And it's just yeah. so uneven that yeah. even the moments where it kind of works, I'm just like so bewildered by the three things that didn't work before it that I can't even appreciate it. And I just think it's too much. It's like we, they took the volume and they just went like this and they didn't restrain him at all. And it's just, I don't think he's the kind of taste that like, you want to max out. You want it in yeah. moderation. And yeah. I just don't think this, nothing about this show is in moderation. And I just, yeah. Yeah. I don't appreciate it. I don't like it. Yeah. Uh, listen, I saw Guardians of the Galaxy and I thought I, I, Guardians, when it's on TV, I watch it. It's great. You know? Yeah. Uh, two, I watch it sparingly for some parts and stuff, but um, yeah, su- this and Suicide Squad were just films that I just couldn't connect with. It wasn't but it's like funny. If you saw Guardians 1, right? So if you yeah. saw Guardians 1, it's like, what if the opening credits of Peter Quill dancing on the planet's surface was 35 minutes? How would you feel mm-hmm. about it? Right, like, you see him come on screen and he's holding the lizard as like a microphone. He's got the song for two minutes. It's entertaining and funny. If that scene had like six songs and was like 25 minutes, you'd be <laughs> like, you might get up and leave. And that's what yeah, I'm saying yeah, is the difference. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's moderation. And when you give somebody free reign to do whatever he wants is whatever he wants and whatever he thinks people out there are going to enjoy and there are very few people i think like again if you like this stuff you're gonna love it and if you don't like it or or a bit of it you it's either you love it or you don't and and for me i just it's just something that i i I couldn't i could i couldn't get into it just also shows at least for the moment that the wb and HBO didn't learn anything from the Zack Snyder experience. Yeah. I mean, here's, a, here's another artist who they just literally handed the keys to because he's doing another show, right? So he's already done one movie that was a critical success and a commercial failure. Whatever else you want to call it, I'm not, I'm not going to blame it on the... I mean, to me, like, you look at No Way Home doing what it did with, you know, Macron headlines everywhere... And I'm like, that's the nail in the coffin to the argument that Suicide Squad was done in by COVID because <laughs> it just wasn't. Right? It was a commercial failure. Period. Yeah, End yeah, of discussion. Yeah, yeah. He does this show. He's already contracted to do a second show. So, I mean, WB is all in on the James Gunn experience to the point where I understand why he's working more with them than at Marvel because at Marvel, yeah. he gets edited. Of course course hey again if you like this if you like peacemaker good for you but let's not argue about oh this is better than anything marvels or or has ever done or some craziness about this is better than anything dc has ever put out on on tv it's like come on yes your boy Bruce JC. Tim is still alive. Bruce <laughs> Tim is still alive. It is the building. That's, that's well, I said, I was, okay, let me rephrase live action TV okay. series. Because to say that would be ludicrous. Um, yeah, but your boy JC, better than, and I like Doom Patrol. Then it got a little he bit too weird. He loves Suicide Squad too. He absolutely loves Suicide Squad. Who's that? JC. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He yeah, yeah. He, oh, 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 yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yeah. He, he, yeah, like, but it's not funny it's not funny our senses of, of humor is a bit different and his is like you can make him pull my finger he'll laugh you know but whatever but if you liked it let us know in the comment section below and listen let's not get crazy you know we didn't enjoy it 
I'm sh if if you liked it, let us know in the comment section below and tell us why you liked it. Cause it's funny. If you if you like that kind of humor, yeah, you probably enjoyed it. Because tell me more why why you like Peacemaker, um, so I can get an understanding of what it is that you know. I may not get it, and and it's fine. Um, but let us know in the comment section below. Next up, um, the Batman. We've gotten some news regarding the length of this film. Um, they're talking 255. Insane. Brian, I wanted to ask you uh, uh, this. Um, what does this runtime tell you about this film? Where we're going? Especially, on a, you know, this is the first film of a trilogy and they're making it this long. What does this this um, runtime tell you? Uh, well, I mean, it tells me several things. It tells me one, you know, they have supreme confidence in the vision and the product. Um, to get a runtime this long for, you know, first film, I mean, that's longer than Heat. Longer, that's as long as Braveheart. That's as long as Fellowship of the Ring. Yeah. I mean, that's long. I actually, it's longer than Dark Knight Rises. Um, I, I'm curious as to, I'm a little curious as to why something so long is necessary. Like just, you know, this movie looks like totally like it's going to be a very dark journey. Oh, yeah, Three yeah, hours yeah. in the dark with this while I would say I'll be fine with it. I think, you know, there's some audiences that might find this that a little bit long. I actually yeah. do think it's a little bit of a box office risk. I know you're out there with the bigger number than I am. Mm -hmm. it, you know, it is it is hard. Obviously, James Cameron's done it before with Avatar and Titanic, but it is tough for the three-hour movie. Yeah. Because you get fewer show times to get yeah. that massive maximum box. So they must really believe. <laughs> like, which is the good, that's the good sign, right? It's like yeah, for yeah. them to authorize that and not mandate to Matt Reeves, yeah. hey, you got to get this at 225. <sighs> says that like you know they must really think people are just gonna eat this up and be like oh, i'll take four hours of this if i can yeah 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 pg-13 by the way it sounds like a very yes. edgy pg-13 but they did yes. not did not go the full r rating on it yeah do you think that so do you think that actually helps or hurts pg-13 versus for this could this movie have actually benefited if it had been r-rated I think so, because I think the, 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 there would be more curiosity as to what a rated R Batman looks like. I agree. I really agree. Because I, I almost feel like the family audience that, that wouldn't have seen it because it was rated R is probably not going to see it anyway. Yeah. Whereas I feel like the, the, there will be this element of novelty if there's an R-rated Batman movie out there. So I'm kind of wondering if they should have just... Gone off of the Tip scales <laughs> enough to get that get that already. Yeah. Um th there are a number of things that I've heard about this film. Uh, and I and I listened to a, a, a YouTuber um and he was talking about some of the screening, some of the things that he, he's heard from screenings of the Batman. What's remained consistent is the 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 runtime. It's been around 255 to three hours. Um, some of the other things that I've heard uh, that the standouts are Paul Dano and, and Zoe Kravitz. They, they do an amazing job um, that we're going to get a lot of Batman because if we go back and think about when this was first announced and, and, and some of the, the, the I guess the storyline that we were getting uh, initially was that we're going to, this is from Batman's perspective. Right. Um, so we're going to get a lot of Batman and the three hour film. That's a lot. Uh, so it'll be interesting if we these cutaways, obviously, from from not Batman sequences or, or Bruce Wayne sequences is going to probably be Paul Dano sequences, which we, we already seen. Um, so it'll be interesting to see who else has this, obviously perhaps maybe the Penguin. But we've already seen him in, in, in the trailers with Batman. So we'll, we'll see what he um, um, does on his own. Um, but aren't you excited about that? Because to me, Batman in the movies to date has always been an action device. Yeah. Right? The Batsuit goes on when he goes into combat. 
But in the comics, the detective work is done as Batman. He doesn't yeah. do it often as Bruce. Yes. So I'm actually stoked for Batman in non-action scenes that includes, you know, solving the like that to me is actually like yeah. observation, spying, like surveillance, yeah. like and that's part of what made, you know, even in little things, the um the Justice League, the Brute Tim animated and in and the old Batman animated series, part of what makes him great is that he's dressed as Batman, but he's actually out on the streets not fighting. Right. Yes. So I'm actually like really excited if there's a lot of Batman, but he's not actually hand to hand all the time. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, what what I've what I've also read and heard is that this is going to be a very brutal Batman. Um, yeah, Pattinson said that right. He's not really a hero. Yeah, and there was an article that I believe you sent me regarding um, he's going Batman is perhaps going to be portrayed less heroic than he has in the past, and I think. That's all a, a matter of him discovering what that word means to him and what people sort of see him as and whether he accepts that or not. Um, <clears throat> we're going to still see um, Alfred playing that father figure role um, in terms of their relationship. Um, and what, another thing that I heard was that there seems to be very, there seems to be very little evidence of the WB, WB's involvement in the making of this film, which is, hey, you give the keys to one guy, you give the keys to another guy, you know, sometimes you get greatness, sometimes you get something yeah. that I don't know what people see in it that they, they see that is so great. <laughs> right. It's weird, but. It's like if I had to do it, I would, you know, give it to somebody like Matt Reeves because I've seen his work and and, and I think he's an amazing director. So, it, it, you know, it's either going to work for Marvel. It didn't work, obviously. With um, Chloe Zhao, I think we can agree that she got her way and we got what we got and um, it is what it is. Um the third sequence of this film is apparently where some people, uh, some screen test didn't really, there were people confused and it was a bit messy, but all the screenings that they've done, the movie has been similar for, except for those few things that they want, I guess, fixed in the third act. Well, what so I've that, also seen. Okay. Uh -huh. So that implies, that implies the 255 might get cut to me. Prior yeah. to the final release, because that's implying that like they're testing a few things, and you could actually see some scenes removed. So, and now when you tell me that, I, I'm actually going to say that 255 is not going to be the final runtime. I bet you. you think I bet so? you it's a little short. Yeah, I bet you it's a little short. Uh, how? Uh, what's the? What do you? Where do you think the runtime will end up? Two thirty. Really? Wow, yeah. that's fifteen minutes. Twenty minutes. Well, tw think. Twenty. Yeah, yeah, that's gonna be my guess. 232. Wow. I, I just think for, a, for a lot. when you say that, that makes me seem like they're screening a cut of the movie that has some ideas in it that they're not sure of and they're letting the audience kind of help them decide. That's my guess. Before we move on, I have to make uh, sort of ask you this question, Brian. And I don't want to, obviously, we set ourselves up because we were so hyped for the movie Eternals. Not to digress, but I'm trying to. Uh, Make a connection here. There were people saying that people that had screened the film and some executives inside that had seen the film Eternals said that this is Oscar worthy. This is what movie did they see? Did they see uh, uh, the the I guess the MCU cut and not the Zoe crap uh, the Zoe crap the Chloe Zhao cut, Brian. I know they'll never do this. They'll never do this. But if I told you, Brian, there's a another cut of the Eternals. Would you see that? Yeah. See, I don't understand why this is not happening more often with the streaming services because I think we have enough examples now of directors' cuts that have been highly successful or at least nice improvements on the theatrical mm -hmm. if the studios got these lying around put them up on your service like mm -hmm. if they're edited i mean as long as they're edited right like what what they were going to do the snyder cut without effects or whatever was a joke but i'm saying yeah, like yeah. 
Snyder, look, the Snyder Cut was a vast improvement on the yeah, theatrical. Yeah, I don't yeah, care what yeah. anyone, I don't care if you liked it or not. It was better yeah. than the theatrical. Yes, 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 yes. For sure. Kingdom of Heaven is light years better, director's cut versus theatrical. Uh, Dawn of Justice is not a great movie either way, but the R-rated director's cut is better than the theatrical cut, 100%. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's like eight cuts of heat floating around, some, like, some wow. of which are better than, yeah, it's crazy. Uh, what's another one? Terminator 2 has the one with the 15 minutes of extra footage and the Kyle wow. Reese flashback. That's oh, wow. interesting. That has some yeah. really interesting stuff in it. There is no reason in this day and age, if you have edited versions of these, why they are not available for consumption so people can make the comparison. It's just for anyone who's a cinephile, it's fun exploration to yeah. know what didn't make it and what's, yeah. you know, what could be. Uh, it, I'm all for it. And like, you know, Eternals has come up on Disney Plus recently. I'm definitely going to watch it again on, on streaming. Like, I want to go yeah. back to what I want. I want to rewatch it. I mean, I don't yeah. think it's going to radically change my view of it, but I absolutely want to see it again. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't want to set myself up for Batman. So I'm trying to like keep chill. Yeah, you're too, that's too late for you, man. It's too late. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm trying not trade, to think your about your trade is like you're you're, <laughs> you're like in the edges of the solar system at this point. There's no bringing you back. Hey, on. no, I know, I know, but I'm trying to for myself, like for my because I don't want to go in there and watch this movie and and it and, and it's I don't think I'll, it'll be this way because I think everything that um, the detective aspect of Batman will keep me glued and tied in to what we'll see. Um, and I think it's going to be very exciting. Uh, one of the other things before we move on that I've, he I've heard is that um, that this movie does a good job of ending and teasing the, the sequel of this film. Ooh, I like uh, that. So Always a good sign. When that's good. Yeah. So, so listen. So I have, a, I have a call on this. Sure. I think that I think the flaws of this movie will be more palatable because of the approach and the tone they're taking, if that makes sense. Because it's, yeah. they're already setting a stage that's so different. Yeah. And they've already, they're already fleshing out some really cool ideas. Yeah. That's probably going to make me more accepting of a few things not quite landing, if that makes sense. Because like yeah, yeah. the bigger narrative is working so well and I'm so excited about it that I'm like, all right, I see you guys dabbling a little bit here and didn't quite all the way get there. But the thrust of this was so cool that like, this is an awesome movie. That's my like instinct for how this is going to go. For instance, like this was just like a rehash of a Batman style that we've seen before. Then every little flaw I think would really stand out. But I think because we're going into new territory, I'm cool with a few things that are like, all right, that's not what I would have done. I'll roll with this because the yeah, overall yeah, yeah. experience is so good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. Let us know what you guys think about this Batman film, man. You you, you guys already know that we're super excited for this. I already have my alerts on Fandango when the, the movie, the tickets come online. Oh, so I can We're get in my... our book in like two weeks, right? Word, yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. That would be, man, you should have told me that would have been a pleasant surprise. <laughs> We're like, what the hell is this? <laughs> you ruined it for me. <laughs> but I'm listen, Byron. I'm gonna buy. I'm gonna. I, I want to see it on a Thursday, but it's like I have to take the day off, and I'll, I'll probably make that happen. I'll see when the moment comes. But I'm gonna buy a, a, a first showing and a second showing. I'm gonna go see. I'm gonna see it back to back. That's what I'm gonna do. Okay. I'm, I'm never gonna see, see it back twice to back. opening weekend, but I don't think I could do it right away. I'm gonna do it back to back. I'm gonna do it back to back. Um, but yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think about uh, all the details that we've been shown for the Batman. And and one other thing before we move on, Brian, I have to just mention this. When I was watching, I saw a couple of pictures of uh, the penguin that they released and this is what the beauty of this and colin farrell in 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 the in the, in the makeup and all this and prosthetics and all that and the way he looks that he looks unrecognizable is that we're getting the penguin it's not all, it's not someone, obviously it's someone playing the penguin but we don't see that person in that character just like we saw Heath Ledger, to me it was the Joker, you know, okay. and, and and the Penguin I think is 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 heading down that road 
Um, but yeah, uh, let us know what you guys think in the comment section below. Um, moving on to some Marvel stuff. We don't got a lot of uh, Marvel stuff today. Um, oh, yeah. We got two things that we're going to talk about real quickly, though. Mbaku's role has been expanded in the Black Panther 2. What does this tell you, Brian? Uh, I mean, tells me that uh, Winston Duke's got a good agent. <laughs> um, no, look, it also tells me that, you know, Ryan Coogler, Ryan Coogler's no fool, right? I mean, he, he's got to. He's got to build this world with some of the more established characters. And so we know Letitia Wright's getting her character expanded meaningfully. And this is a character that makes sense, I think. I mean, he's, you know, Winston Duke did a nice job and we were introduced to him. I assume, um, I'm guessing Daniel Kaluuya, we haven't heard anything about Daniel Kaluuya's character, but I'm assuming he would also be a candidate to have his role uh, expanded pretty meaningfully as well. So, I mean, I just, yeah. I mean, so I'm, I'm all for it. I just... Um, continue to be fascinated with how they have kept the shroud of secrecy over the black yeah. panther man what, what I, I i'm kind of impressed that there's like there's not even a hint of a leak yeah yeah of what they're actually doing with the character of black panther not yeah the child the character of black man yeah we we still and to your point we still we obviously we still don't know what um wh what will happen to the character of T'Challa. But Brian, if how would you feel? I know how I'd feel if they implied this or made it known that T'Challa died off screen or whatever the case may be. I would be very disappointed. Very disappointed. What what are your thoughts if you in the film see early on probably the first 20, 30 minutes that 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 is indeed the case? So I've been thinking about this. I just mm, I, I, so Nate, I I know Nate Moore was very specific about the Earth 616 to child mm -hmm, not being mm -hmm, recast. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I can't help but feel like that's a very specific comment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, and it got me wondering, what if the device was a little bit similar to Force Awakens, where he's actually disappeared? And it's almost like the search for him. So he's not actually known to be dead. He might be presumed dead. Some say he's dead. Some say he's gone, like, to another dimension. Like, there's all these rumors. But, like, part of the world building is there... Kind of in search of information regarding what happened to him and as part of that they can use that to almost honor him along the way like there'll be like stories about great things he did that we didn't see in the original film and that becomes a way to provide a tribute to chadwick but they actually can leave then open the possibility that in another part of the multiverse there is someone someone else who might i don't know i just you know to go with what with the conventional wisdom of like finality of he's just like here's a here's a gravestone and here's a clear story of what happened that we never got to see it seems so unmarvel to me that like yeah. even though I know they want to do right by Chadwick Boseman's legacy, they just have a tough time believing that it's going to be that open and shut in yeah. the end. I don't know. What do you think? Do you think they'll actually just really kill like kill 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 him off on like get the character and leave themselves no out. I just don't think they'll do it. I think initially that's the call. I think they've probably heard the calls of many that they would like for, for the character of the child to be recast. Even his own brother, Chadwick Boseman's own brother was like, he wouldn't have wanted this. I feel like he wouldn't have wanted this. And I think at some point I I hope, and I and Brian Coogler and Nate Moore should understand this how important the character T'Challa and the Black Panther, the mantle of the Black Panther is. And I think it stands more. It stands for more, and 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 obviously it was a great tragedy to lose Chadwick, but um, I think his legacy will be. Um, 
cherished more if in the next 10 years, 15 years, we have these movies of the Black Panther and he will always be remembered as the first. And, and so I think there's honor in that. Um, Moon Knight. Brian, remember what I said? I said he's going to be playing multiple different personalities. And for each of these joints, we have to really believe it. Is looking like he's able to do this. I am very excited for this because this is like totally different than because this this is a serious character. It's not Hawk. It's not. I'm not gonna say goof, Hawkeye wasn't goofy, but it got goofy a little bit. You know, it got a little bit goofy. Um, especially with the Kingpin. That was a, that was an atro- that was that was a bad thing that they did there. But um, with this character, there's a lot of things going on here, a lot of details that I think we're going to explore and, and just so many things happening that you really have to pay attention to what's going to be occurring here to keep up. So I'm much more excited for this, Brian, than I was before after seeing this trailer. Your thoughts? It looks great. Uh, yeah. It... Uh... It grabs like Mister Isaac grabs you in this. He does a great. Um, his like confused, scared face is awesome in this. <laughs> but it does, <laughs> he makes you buy this idea of like this guy who clearly has a trauma, has no idea what's happening to him, but like there's doing all sorts of tricks to like figure out what's real and what's not. Um, the accent is jarring, yeah. but obviously, I think we know it's not his real. Uh, it's not his ultimate voice. Like we're hearing one of the identities he's assumed has kind of you know taken this accent on. Yeah. Um, but I like the kind of fear and sort of almost um, almost horror, right? It felt like a horror movie. That scene where he's in the elevator and flashing with that old yeah. woman, creature, no creature, creature, no creature, felt very much... Like, well, to throw a DC now, almost like a James Wan horror movie, yeah. um, that scene, which I really liked. Uh, so I like that part of it. I like the costume. The costume was good. Man. I yeah, thought that yeah, was actually yeah. like the end when they flash it to you. I was like, oh, this doesn't look hokey. Because yeah. we, we've had some, you know, Falcon Winter Soldier. We had an uneven run here with yeah, costumes yeah, yeah. and main characters. Yeah. This, was, this looked like a sharp costume. So I really like that. And look, I mean, I'm dying for more Ethan Hawke, man. But it looked, he looks cool as sort of this cult leader they identified him i'm not really familiar with arthur harrow like around as much in the comics but mm-hmm, mm-hmm. he looks pretty ominous and pretty scary so i'm, yeah. I'm pretty psyched. and it looks like they are going to go head to head on screen at least based on the trailer so yeah no yeah. i thought this was but it's although it's funny because like we're out we're we're white we're both watching it at home and like the wife was like oh, that looks. she didn't what like was that it. My she, wife didn't was like out. She, she didn't like it. She's yeah. like, what is this? That, that doesn't look. And I was like, and I'm like, this looks great. I can't wait to March 10th. So maybe that says something. So yeah, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. They, might be, they might not be getting everyone on board this right away. But I think it looks cool. I think it looks very different. Very cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. Any other reactions you had to the content? Um, no, I'm just very much looking forward to seeing how Ethan Hawke and, and, and his character face up to one another and how they how they act off of each other. I want, I want to see how that uh, chemistry is and all the different multiple personalities. And there was this one piece of synopsis synopsis for Moonlight for Moon Knight that I read that, that, that I feel like it's very um, something that you should pay attention to. And I'll read it real quick. It was after developing his other personalities. When he took on the mantle of Moon Knight, Khonshu granted Specter with increased physical capabilities and periodic prophetic visions at night. Yet even Specter himself was unsure whether Kanshu was yet another personality of his own creation. Even still, Moon Knight operates with an arsenal of technology, vehicles, and costumes to suit his needs. There's just so much there to be curious about and excited to see what um, the arsenal that he has, the technology that he uses the vehicles that he uses. I want to see, they haven't showed us that persona of him being the suave, rich guy, you know? So all those things I am looking forward to seeing. It has me excited to see 
uh, because it's, it's, it has to be one hell of a performance, in my opinion, in order for this to work. I think they've already staked ground, though, that, it's, again, it's not Batman, right? That, that comparison yes, gets yes, made, yes, yes. but this trailer yes. did a very good job of establishing this is a distinct yes. character from that. Yes. So let us know in the comment section below what you guys thought of the Moon Knight trailer. Um, oh, quick, well, quick also, obviously, mm -hmm. quick also, like... Oh, yes. Condolences to the actor, who yeah. I'm not familiar with, but the French Me actor either. who was actually playing Midnight Man in this series, who was killed mm -hmm. in a ski accident um, yesterday, which this season is already baked. It's, it's in the can, so his role for this season will be played out like normal, but I guess, you know, in light of this, I mean, I'll be curious to see how the character is set up. Like, is that something yeah. that was supposed to go forward in, in the yeah. show? But that was a real tragic piece of news. Yeah, condolences, condolences to um, his family and friends that have lost, uh, you know, 37 years old. And it, it sucks. Um, it, it, it sucks to lose someone um, so early in his career and perhaps his breakout role, you know? Yeah, um, it sounded like a pretty well. Yeah, his name Gaspar Uliel. We weren't really, familiar, I wasn't familiar with him at all, but this sounded like a pretty major part that he had. Yeah, yeah. Um, one final question for Brian before we end this show. Brian, we 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 did two shows. We we did a show of our top ten most anticipated films for 2022, and we did our top ten most anticipated film uh, shows or series for 2022. We didn't really do a, a 2021 recap or anything like that, but I wanted to find out what was your most uh, disappointing um, movie of 2021. And, I, and I, But I'm going to guess what it is, and you tell me what is mine. I'm going to say it could be different, but I think because we hyped it up so much, and then the, comments, the, the conversation that we had afterwards, and... Even today, we had a bit of a conversation about it. Eternals Correct. was probably, huh? Yeah. Correct. Yeah? Yeah. 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 What was mine? Sean T. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. I was like, he's going to know, and I'm going to know his because the way we both <laughs> spoke about these films, and, 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 and he was, you seen it like three times in the theaters. I don't know how many times you saw it, right? Three. Yeah, so yeah. I saw it once and I was good. I don't need to see it again. And if you go back to our shows, you'll know why we didn't like um, or why Brian didn't like so much the Eternal. I liked it. I think it, it I think certain things got in the way of it being uh, um, fantastic, in my opinion. Yeah, but you phrased it. You phrased it specifically. Disappointment is an implication of expectation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, you know, Eternals is much better than Matrix Resurrection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Didn't have expectations for Matrix. Like Eternals, yeah, 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 I was yeah, yeah, expecting yeah. Yes. to be wowed on a level that I had rarely been wowed in the genre. And what yeah, I got yeah. was kind of muddled and average. Yeah. Um, but had its moments, and I, as I said, I, you know, <laughs> I actually think this is one where I want the non-director's cut. I want someone else to go <laughs> and edit it. <laughs> like, let's bring in a second director. Let, yeah, yeah. Not yeah. Josh Whedon. Let's bring the <laughs> director to re-edit this and, yeah. and give, it, give us a different version of it. That, but uh, no, there's no question. Uh, and, and for you, yeah, I, I totally understand it. You had a very specific expectation for Shang Chi's martial arts. Yes. and choreography and when, once the movie didn't give you that that movie was not gonna make it for you yeah I, I, to me it just didn't live up to his moniker his name what he, or who, what, what you know master of kung fu and i didn't see a master of kung fu i just saw the same stuff that i've seen throughout the years from jackie chan i'm still waiting for that bruce lee moment that 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 captivate a character that captivates um, um, in terms of his look, in terms of how he moves, in terms of his, you know his arrogance and charisma, I didn't see that, um, and it was more about the relationship relationship between um, his father and, and himself, and not about kung fu, which I thought this was gonna really be on on display. And, and to me, I don't think we got that. I think we got more.
same stuff, just in a different setting, a different acrobat, all this stuff. It was just different, but still the same. But yeah, that's our show for you today. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys thought of each of the subject matters that we spoke about today. Uh, Brian, any last words? No, other than yeah, it's hard to believe that the Batman's only like six weeks away. I know, right? Like, that oh, snuck I, up I, on me after all the waiting <laughs> we've done. Like, when we started talking about it, I was like, oh, it's like late January. We have just yeah. over a month. I'm telling you, it's creeping up. Yo. I'm and it kind of feels like once. Me. So the weird thing too is like once that hits, the year begins. Because yeah. everyone else like backed away, right? So no. So once that movie's been out for a few weeks, then everything is coming. All yes. the other content is coming behind. Yes. Black Adam. We, we still strange. Yeah, Doctor Strange. Yeah, that was strange. Damn, like what else? Like Aquaman. Like everything's <laughs> coming behind. Yeah. The Star Wars shows. Like everything. There's just everything's yeah. on hold. Almost been so we clear that. So yeah, that's our show. Please remember to hit that like button. Please uh, share, share with your friends. Comment in the comment section below. And we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gen Report.